I'm Andrew with Popular Woodworking. Today on I Can Do That, I'm going to show you how to use your router for stuff beyond making roundovers and edge profiles. We'll show you how to do some router joinery. We'll be making some dados with a simple dado jig. We'll be showing you how to do rabbits. And then finally, we'll be cutting some circles and arches. I'm going to reset. Stay tuned. So the first thing we need to do is change out our, our roundover bit and put in a straight bit for cutting our, our dados. You can see here that the roundover bit has a bearing on the top and a slight curve. The straight bit that we're using for this is just, you can see, a straight edge there. That'll give us an, a nice uh, groove for our data. So before we start changing the bit, though, we want to make sure we unplug the router. <clears throat> changing router bits is one of the things I, I hate to do. Um, it never seems to go right. But we'll give it a shot here. So this router has a uh, collet that you use a wrench on and then a lock here to lock the bit in place as you're loosening it. Just go ahead and loosen this. Once the collet's loose, the bit pops out and we can put our other bit in. Now you don't want to shove the bit all the way into the bottom and you also want to be careful because the ears are sharp. Um, what I like to do is go all the way to the bottom and then bring it out just a hair. And that's so as the router starts, starts to spin, the bit doesn't vibrate out of the collet. Go ahead and tighten that up. Just need a little bit of tightening on there. Need plenty. And we'll throw the base back on. There we go. So once we have our straight bit installed, we're going to put on our edge guide. Now, uh, a lot of routers will come with an edge guide that look like this. <clears throat> you can notice we've got a gap here in between where the guide rides on your board. And once you get to the end, it can turn and move on you, which you don't want. So we're just going to install a little auxiliary fence, just a piece of hardwood held on with a couple screws here. One, loosen that up, make sure it's in the right spot. <clears throat> and now you can see as it rides along the edge of your board, there's no tipping. <clears throat> Then to install the guide, it just slides on the side of the router here and is held in place with a wing nut. Okay, there we go. Double check that our depth is right on the dado. Um, the board is three quarters of an inch and you, the general rule of thumb is you never want to go more than half that so we'll go about three eighths of an inch on the bit. Deep, that's maybe, oh, that's pretty much right on there. Next thing we want to do is lay out where we want our dado to be. Just set that up here. Trusty square. Make a mark. Then find the other side here. There we've got our dado laid out. <coughs> then we'll want to double check where we're routing here. Okay, so we'll move the guide over. This is the, the trickiest part of using a, a guide like this is setting up your cut. Looks like it's pretty good. Tighten that up. Just going to double check from the back here too. Okay. 
All right. Now we'll clamp our board down. We're actually going to route this dado in two passes um, because the bit itself isn't a full three quarters inch wide. Put on our safety glasses, ear protection. Make sure the router is plugged back in after we're done handling it. And then we'll set up and route our first dado. So you can see it cut a nice solid groove and we just need to nibble off that other end there. Set up our cut. And route the other pass. Check our fit. It's a little bit loose, a little bit sloppy, um, but thankfully the jig we're going to be building next will take care of all that. So we'll reset and start working on the jig. So our uh, router dado jig is really pretty simple. Um, it has four parts. You've got two bottom pieces and then two fences. Um, so you set this up. So you've got a 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle here. Um, and this is a fixed fence. Then you'll have a fence that moves back and forth so you can do different widths of dados. Uh, the first thing we need to do though is to cut some slots in your uh, bottom pieces. And to do that we'll use a quarter inch uh, spiral bit in our router. Uh, that'll give us a slot just size for these quarter inch uh, carriage bolts and star knobs. So we're going to be cutting slots through the boards. We don't want to do that all in one pass, so we'll do a couple passes to get us there. Um, we'll also use the same router with the same fence on it. Um, it's not, it doesn't need to be precisely in the center. Um, so I've, I've got the, the fence, so the bit is roughly centered. And we'll set up for our first cut here. Bring that up a little bit. So we're cutting about just just over, uh, just shy of halfway through the board there, like so. Then we'll also want to set up uh, our start and stop points, mark out where our slot is going to be. There, roughly there. So to do the cut, because we're not starting at the end of the board, we're going to be plunging into the center of the board. Um, you can see that we just have the fixed base on our router. So to do the plunge, um, the way I like to do it is start with half with the base, um, rest, half of the base resting on your board, and you'll swing into the plunge. So we're going to plunge in, not at our line, but in a little bit way, a little bit, go back to our line, and route all the way through. Then we just need to adjust our bit a little bit deeper uh, to cut all the way through. You can see I've got a waste board under here too so I don't cut into the top of the workbench. Let's just make sure that's deep enough to cut through. It's maybe even a little bit too deep. That'll be good. 
And then we just do that same plunge motion again here. Now that we have one cut, we'll use that to lay out the second board. So we'll lay out the second hole here. Get in there with an awl, because my pencil won't fit. I don't have to be super precise, because um, the you'll see how the jig works here in a second. Go ahead and throw some lines on. And then we can set up for our cut again. Then we'll adjust the bit for the through cut. There we've got our two slots cut. So to assemble the jig, um, we wanna make sure our fence on this side is at precisely 90 degrees, um, both here and here. The easiest way to do that is line up our boards roughly, throw one screw in. I, I pre-drilled this top piece of plywood here. And then we can come in with our square, and make sure everything's nice and squared up here. Say that looks pretty good. Come back in, throw another screw in. Double check that we're still square. Looks good. Throw that final screw in. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. Okay. So now you can see we've got a nice straight fence with a right angle here. And then this fence will slide on these slots to open and close here. And to do that, um, we just need to make a couple holes. So we'll flip this over and throw a couple of points in here for our holes. We want to make sure they're roughly in the center of the board. There, do that here. And then all you need to do is drill through the board there. So then we just need to assemble the jig. Um, we've added washers to our carriage bolts to help uh, them slide in the slots a little bit more cleanly. Just pop those under there. And then we can throw our sliding fence on, tighten it in. So the thing that makes this jig all work is using a straight bit with a bearing on top. You can see the other bit we, the other straight bit we used to cut our previous dados doesn't have a bearing, so it doesn't have anything to ride against. So the bearing will ride against both sides of the fences here in our slot, and because the fence is adjustable, 
we can make this dado any width we want. So I'll set that up and we'll cut some dados. So we've got our uh, board we're cutting under here. And you can use this width here to determine the width of your dado. It's really simple. You just throw your piece of stock in there, snug it up, tighten these down. Pull that out and then clamp this in place and you can route your dado. One thing you also want to do is make sure their uh, bit depth is set to the right setting. So you can come in here and you can see right in there that we're cutting about a quarter of an inch into the piece of plywood. And so we're going to do this in two passes. We'll go up along this fence and come back along this fence. Here we go. Moment of truth. Nice and tight. Now let's talk about rabbiting with a router. So rabbiting with a router means you're using a rabbiting bit. You can see here that a rabbiting bit has a bearing on the bottom and then an offset cutter. Uh, most rabbiting bit sets come with different size bearings so you can have different size offsets. This one is set to about 3 16 of an inch. So you can see as it rides along the board, it's gonna cut 3 16 inches off as it rides along. Now you're gonna ask yourself, where am I gonna use rabbits? Uh, most often I use rabbits in the back of cabinets um, to fit in a backer board or I'll sometimes use them in the bottom of drawers that aren't, aren't going to see a ton of use. So I'm going to throw this in the router, cut a rabbit, and show you how it all works. So there you can see we created this nice lip around the edges. Um, you can tell that it also left rounded corners, so we'll clean those up with a chisel and fit in the back. Just take our trusty chisel here and square up the corners. I like to sort of use hand pressure to make my nice square corner and then a little tap, another little tap. Then we just take our uh, back piece that's cut to size, pop it in. So you've got your nice little rabbited back cabinet. I'd just like to take a minute to thank our sponsors for this video, Woodcraft and Tightbond. Everything you need to do these router projects and any other woodworking projects is available at your local Woodcraft store or online, including routers, router bits, hardware, router jigs, plywood, hardwood, anything you need for woodworking is at your local woodcraft store. And while you can order online, if you've got one in your area, make sure to head on down to the store and chat with their sales employees. Um, they know probably more about woodworking than I do, and they're a great resource. And when it comes time to glue your project together, uh, make sure to check out Tightbond. They've got a glue for every application. Now back to the show. So cutting circles and arches with your router is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll show you how to use this simple, uh, inexpensive compass guide 
Um, basically, you've got your center point and your cutter. As your cutter cuts through, you can see it, it cuts a nice circular arc. So I'll mount the router on that and show you how that works. So we've got our router mounted in our compass jig. And as you can see here, we've got our point and our cutter. Now, if you're routing a circle, you want to measure your radius to the outside of the cutter. But if you're routing an arc like we are, uh, you want to measure to the inside of the cutter. And we've got our cutter set for nine and a half inches. So that'll give us a nine and a half inch arc from the center. Put on our safety gear and we'll start routing here. Now the other thing to keep in mind is um, we're using a plunge router. And we're going to do this in uh, multiple passes. Um, and that's because uh, we don't want to put too much torque on, on the bit and on the jig as we're routing. So we'll do this in two passes here. So we'll set the depth to just about half. Make sure that's all lined up there. Um, we are routing MDF. Uh, it's going to get really dusty. Wearing a mask is also a great idea. Here we go. And we'll come back around and we'll route all the way through this time. So there you've got your nice arc. If you aren't interested in buying one of these jigs, they're also really easy to make, so we're going to make one to cut a circle. So to build our super simple circle jig, say that three times fast, uh, all you need is a piece of uh, sheet goods. I'm using half inch MDF here. You could use quarter inch plywood. Um, this is just sort of what I had around. Three quarter inch plywood gets a little thick. Um, you're going to lose some depth on your bit. So try to use half inch or, or quarter inch. You just want something that's nice and, and firm and solid. Uh, and then the other thing you need beyond your piece of wood is a finishing nail. And that's going to be the center of your radius. Really the hardest part about building this jig is mounting your router. So we'll go do that next. Uh, mounting your router on, on this piece of wood may seem a little bit uh, overwhelming if you're thinking about lining up all these holes. Easiest way to do it is grab your base off your router and use that to mark out where your holes are going to be. I'm just going to come in here and mark out where my holes are. back up here. And then I'm just going to drill these out. Now I'm also going to throw a countersink on the bottom so the screws don't get in the way as it's moving around the board. going to flip this over and drill from the other side to clean up the back here. All right. Then we just mount our router to our jig. So lining up this first hole is probably one of the harder parts of putting this jig together. I think I got it lined up there. Once you have one in, the rest of them should fall right in line. That should be good. 
Now we're using a plunge router for this procedure too. Um, it's just a, a lot easier to use because we want to cut thick pieces and multiple passes. Um, and once you've got it on your jig, you're going to use it quite a bit. So now that we have our router mounted there, we're going to do our initial plunge through the jig. So now we have our jig basically zeroed out. <clears throat> and we also can now figure out uh, our radius. So if I want to make a 10 inch circle, um, I need my, the center of my circle at 5 inches, like so. And because I do want to make a 10 inch circle, I'm going to mark out five inches, going from the end of the bit, because uh, it's going to cut the, the whole whip there. And then we just get to drive our finish nail through the board. So the smart way to do this uh, is to Tap it through the bottom and then bring it back through the top. Then flip it over, find our hole there. Going to double check my radius. Looks pretty good. And then I need to find the center of my board here. 17 and a half. Half of that is 8 and 3 quarters. Pop that in there. Good. And then I'm going to drill a pilot hole for my radius to drop into. There we go. Now all we get to do is route. We'll take it in two passes. Make sure I clamp everything down here. Now because we don't want to cut into the top of our bench, I've got a, another piece of half inch MDF under the board I'm cutting as a sacrificial board because we will cut all the way through. Um, the other thing you want to keep in mind when you're securing your workpiece is that your jig doesn't hit your clamps at all. I've run into that after I haven't thought about it thoroughly. So do that, throw in our safety gear, and we'll do our first plunge, go all the way around, and then plunge all the way through and cut a second time. Now, if everything went correctly, we should have a perfect circle in the center of this board. And 
there's your perfect circle. So uh, I build uh, some speaker cabinets and I actually keep a couple of jigs set up specifically for 10 inch and 12 inch speakers. Um, I find it's really handy, it's inexpensive. One of my favorite things to do with a router. Stay tuned for more I Can Do That and we'll see you next time.